Hello, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, where uh, Dory and I tackle the day in the life of ServiceNow admins and developers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's been a while since uh, you've done that intro. You're almost forgetting what we were going to say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. It's... <laughs> you go a few weeks without doing an episode. and uh... Yeah. Can't yeah, remember I'm, anything. I'm really excited about this episode, uh, mostly because uh, Creator Toolbox already did an episode. So shout out to the to that team with Chuck and, and Earl, even though I don't think Earl was actually on this one, and Lauren, um, where they they really kind of are really advancing the security of uh, of, yeah. of service now, or at least the administration of the security. Yeah, and, I th I think you know, data filtration makes it just that much easier. I mean, okay, point of view for me as a developer, when someone says, oh, hey, we need to create some ACLs, you know what I do? I go, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> do I have to? Oh, gross. And if I'm just prototyping stuff, guess what I don't do? I don't create any <laughs> or any of that stuff because it's such a pain in the butt. But now with data filtration, it's so much easier. Yeah. Even I can do it. It, I feel like the last like release in this one, they, they talk about like adaptive authentication where mm -hmm. it's really focused on where the subject is, like AKA the person logged in or the person doing that action or what they're doing or what access they have in order to determine, um, you know, how to approach. And like, that's even exciting with, and it's, it, they're using shared code between their like SSO as well. So like, you'll now be able to do like, if this IP is like logged in, then they have access to, you know, a certain record. Or right. Not. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something and I you think couldn't do before. In right. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. The, the granularity there. And and from what, oh, I can't remember his name, but the, the other guy that was on that uh, show. Scott, maybe. Maybe, Scott. maybe the product yeah. owner. Mm -hmm. He was talking about, you know, this is MVP currently, and so there's more changes coming, um, and uh, and so I think that may get built out more, you know, by beyond just uh, the IP address and a couple other things they have currently listed. Um, but it's neat to see the granularity they're offering in being able to really restrict down, um, you, you know, viewability of, of records and so forth. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I think um, I think I can see the future where it's like now we're talking citizen developers, and I know you need security admin to do this right now. But in the future, like if it's in your app and you have that delegation admin, like now you can then also control where you couldn't control that before. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, and like I said, you know, a, a person like me who I probably would uh, for the platform side is more citizen developer than anything else. It, it just makes it uh, so much easier because it's it's. And I think he mentioned this. It's readable. You know, it's it's understandable mm -hmm. from the get go. It's not like an ACL where you're like, uh, how does this work? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do I have to do? <laughs> the amount of times I read that chart of like, you know, when does things get access or not? Like it's just. Well, and then and then you have to follow the flow down, right? Yeah, what is yeah, it? Yeah. Um, oh, you know, it's like record, uh, field. You know, it, it's this whole hierarchy that you have to know. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this is showing how bad we are as <laughs> security. Yeah. You know, I really try to not touch ACLs, like yes, ever. Right, like if. I had to touch an ACL for surveys actually. And I was like, man, I can't wait for data filtration. Cause that's like a prime example of like, I don't need to build an ACL for this. Um, and I could do data filtration for it. Yeah, you know, Cause, no, cause, I, cause I agree. Cause I think a really good use case here <clears throat> is around surveys. Like if you think about, there's so many different people in the company that may want to run surveys in service now. And like, uh -huh. if you give them survey admin, access to go and modify a survey and it's it's relatively easy to to do so but like then you give them access to all of your surveys and so like this is like the instant easy use case i can think of like i only want this person to see their survey and i only want this person to see their survey yeah yeah sure <laughs> from the, an administration the, standpoint right yeah the implications are, are are huge you know um being able to to really 
segregate data from other people, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think we wanted to go a little bit further because there is one, there's one drawback with with data filtration, right? There's that, and this something, this is something that comes up quite frequently when you are doing uh, different methods of, uh, of security. You get that message, X yeah. number of records hidden yeah, due to security constraint. constraints. Yeah. And, Nobody wants I, to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny. It's like nobody. Like I haven't found a single client that's like, oh, I like seeing that message. <laughs> <laughs> What's this message? I don't like it. People shouldn't yeah. know. Yeah, this yeah. is no good. Yeah. Um, and that comes from. So if you're doing, uh, what is it? Uh, ACLs. It's because it's uh, it's it happens after, mm -hmm. in the in the line in the hierarchy of how things are processed. So it's it's like part of the last thing. Yep, totally. It was it was definitely an architectural decision where it's like we want to before the query happens do some things, right. remove some yep. records, then pass it over to uh, the query, and then pass it over to an ACL to make sure that you know they they do or don't have access. And the ACL is like that last line of defense, and right. they decided to to put a security message there. And right. you know like this is so long ago but like all they had to do is only show that security message if you're an admin and this thing would have been like you know never i, I think issue. i think it should be a configuration item show security constraint message or don't show yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. it's like i get why you need it it's because at some point if you're an admin trying to debug you have no idea right like what's going on and so right you know, right but right it sounds like you know speaking of debug it sounds like they've really made it with with data filtration they've really made it um very debuggable right yeah. if you're using that new debug screen um it, it really i mean unlike the error messages of yesteryear it actually tells you the what's query. happening yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's so nice yeah kudos yeah, so, on that one service now like it <laughs> It's definitely a new mindset, it seems like, when they're building new yeah. core platform features to really make it everybody's lives easier. And I'm assuming it makes their lives easier. So Probably. Like, it's, yeah, right. That's it, good. Yeah, so let's let's uh let's dive in. So the or before we dive in, like let's so what we don't want to do is recreate the content that the right the, yeah. the creative toolbox uh people did. So we'll put in the description of this, you know, a link out to them really awesome they spent an hour they have a product manager in there like mm -hmm. super detailed for um, anyone that wants to know the the back end behind it or even the context of why it is um, but one of the limitations that they talked about is um, the that security constraint message is still there so right. what john and i were thinking is why don't we try to automate uh <laughs> creating a business query rule based on a data filtration so we have no idea if we'll get how far we'll get <laughs> um, we, and we may give up halfway i, I don't know um, but i think that would be just like a little fun activity to to try to dive into some of the, the before uh, right. query rules so you get an idea and they do say that this feature will eventually be supported so you don't yes. have to do this so this yeah. is more of like a temporary fun activity stop to, gap yeah to, to, to do yeah yeah yeah, I'm glad they talked about that, that they, you know, in future builds, they are very cognizant of data filtration still being towards the end of the hierarchy where they want to be able to either give you a choice to run it at like a before business query or still back at the end. So I think that's kind of neat that they're, you know, they really are thinking ahead on some of these new uh, features that they're offering. Yeah, totally. And it was we got a tidbit that was really interesting about Glide Record and Glide Record Secure. I don't know if you if you remember that conversation. Oh, I, I remember it's, there were some they, comments about that if I remember correctly. Yeah, they went down the rabbit hole of like why isn't everything Glide Record Secure and <laughs> the nuances there and it was like, you know, like at some point, somebody needs access to read the the, the, the thing, and, <laughs> and it's just so commingled that it was just like, yeah. oh, all right, we can't, well, we can't solve this one. Just did right. they? I, I I can't remember if they mentioned it or not, but there was something about admins also, right? That they're um, they they because you can, you know, if you do, oh, maybe I'm misremembering how this works. Oh well, we'll we'll ignore that for now. We'll move on and get into the yeah. meat of this. 
I also want to say, John, it's so like clean behind you. Like it's so organized. Like that bookshelf looks amazing. <laughs> that's only because you can see at this. Oh, oh, see, there's a yeah, desk yeah, that's yeah. just oh, messy. That's that's, <laughs> that's my wife's desk. So I I try to stand in front of that. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> and you know, I, I like the wallpaper behind you. That is like, what is that? Art Deco-y? 90s yeah. Art Deco-y? 80s Art Deco-y? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually in a hotel, so <laughs> it's uh, it's not my wall, unfortunately. Oh, where are you? Uh, I'm currently in Poland, actually. Poland. Wow, mm. Mr. Traveler over there. What are you doing in Poland? Uh, so, crazy story i ended up in poland you know hitchhiking now um so there uh, i was yeah. <laughs> um you know uh, i think we talked about it before there's the whole cta a certified technical mm -hmm. architect program where you're with a cohort for you know six months or four to six months and you're, you're assigned a team and actually one of my old team members from that cta program is getting married in poland neat yeah. Neat. That's pretty so, cool. So there's actually a, a three or four of the the CTA folks here that we're gonna get to hang out and and chat again. So it, it's it's been a really cool experience that like not only do you like get to work on your you know CTA and gather a lot of experience, you actually get to meet really cool people that are interested yeah. in uh, in being friends afterwards as well. You know, it's what I love about the ServiceNow community. I I, I miss. Like I, I haven't been to a knowledge in a few years, but I miss that, you know, kind of community that you get, you, you start meeting people and you, and you become like fast friends. It's like all of a sudden everyone's like, dude, let's get together and do this or do that or whatever. It's, it's just pretty cool. Yeah, I can't I wait till I can get back to one. I love that someone came up to me at Knowledge and was like, oh, you're Dorian. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm like, I don't know you. Oh, wait, I know you. Like, yeah, so that, that's definitely a fun experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, cool. well, let's jump in. Let me share yeah, my screen. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. Um, okay. All right. So I've installed the plugin. Um, we can, uh, verify that if I look for data filtration, there's all my stuff. And, uh, so we're going to start with role cause that one's like the easiest one. Um, and, and I think in the future, or I think the way this will be used more is definitely that subject criteria. So you're creating like a grouping of things so that someone's in a group and a role. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely think that's like the complexity you'll, you'll get for, or, uh, flexibility you'll get with that. Um, right. but for us, I think starting on role filter to kind of show it is definitely the, the way to go. And you've already mm -hmm. elevated, I'm assuming since you, oh. You know what? Good call there. I have not. And I guess you don't need to elevate to create the criteria, but to use it, you will. So. Oh, yeah. So, what do we want to call this? So, I mean, the fun ones that I like to play with is incident, right? Like we, we you probably have incidents in your, in your demo incident. So like, let's let's play around with like hiding incidents if you don't have a specific role, right? Like, and we could, we could, we could name it whoever. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. We're, we're going to make up a role here. Like, I can get stuck on naming for hours, yeah, yeah. so be so careful we'll, with that. We'll do, uh, you can't see incidents if you don't have survey, survey role, survey reader role. All right, let's see here. Just to, because uh, we were talking about service this evening. Perfect. Okay. So we are looking for. Let's which one do you survey, want? Survey. Survey reader. Survey reader. Okay. Yeah. And it's interesting. So what you're doing with these like role filter criteria, this is actually what you would use to combine them. I actually don't think you need to do this for just a one off one. So like if you go back to all and and go to your data 
So, so like this is useful if you want to combine things in the subject criteria. Um, but if you just wanted to create like a very basic one, you wouldn't need to. So if you click click new here, so just um, survey reader uh, restrictions. I think it's actually the opposite, but that's okay. Just for this. Um, just to kind of show that like under the uh, inputs, if you click edit here, you'll see that your option is is there now. So that's like this is where you would you would be building the kind of like reusable components using that. Right. But for for our simplicity, we actually just need to go to um, all and then just go to the data filtration records. Just the top one. And we'll just create a new one. And we won't need to actually use that subject criteria in this in this case. So that's definitely, you know, I, I wonder if they'll make that experience a little bit better um, on like when do you create criteria and subject criteria versus just putting it right into the, the data filtration. I, I'm hoping that, the, you know, like you said, this is a new mindset on, on feature building and they take into consideration feedback. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and so I, I'm hoping that, you know, they can do that and, and say, hey, you know what, we've gotten feedback here that, that people are really uh, interested in having things laid out a little easier for us to understand and stuff like that and, and can incorporate that in. I think that would be really, really neat. By the way, someone messed something in chat, but I can't actually see it, John. So maybe. Oh well, let's see what they wrote. Maybe it's a high. Oh answer. yeah, it's Ash Ashitosh. This hey. is one of my favorite features. Nice, I, nice. I, I think for admins, this is going to become huge. Honestly, you know. A hundred percent agree. Yeah, let's go to incident. Let's do the table on incident. So we're gonna. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh. Just because that's like the easiest to to kind of demonstrate. Okay, so under, so let's say you can, the description could be, you can only see incidents if you have survey reader. And we're gonna say- Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. <laughs> and maybe it's like, you can only see active incidents. We'll, we'll make it a little bit, more robust. Only see active incidents. And this oh, is no. I remember. I remember uh, Chuck saying this was a very short uh, description. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm then, they'll probably change that before GA. Like I think that's such an easy change for them. Like, but yeah, maybe not. Okay. So, um, so now that we have our description. If we look at our data field, so users that uh, do not satisfy the subject condition will be denied records matching this. Okay, so we want to say that active is true. And yeah, so that means that if the subject, because, and again, this is like kind of weird to think about. And I think Chuck mentioned this as well. Like, if you don't match, the subject condition, then you will deny be denied seeing these records. <laughs> you don't match. Hmm. Okay. So, so if you do match the subject condition, so we'll we'll talk about the subject condition, then um, you get access to see this. Oh right, I think they did mention that they felt these were backwards too, because when you read it out or when you say it out loud, right? It, subject condition well you haven't gotten there yet because you've been working on this guy yeah and i think they did it because they wanted to follow the layout <laughs> of atls which talks about the data first and then rules but right uh, uh, questionable <laughs> <laughs> cool. so for the subject condition so now we're so going back to our description we want to do the subject role is from a survey reader And let's uh, deactivate this real quick, just to kind of show oh. that we can uh, sure. see records. And then when you activate it, you don't see records kind of thing. Yeah. 
Have you noticed PDIs are a bit slower than normal as of late? I, just, I, I don't know. It's all the other, all the, every other time, right? <laughs> and and you don't have survey reader role, I'm assuming, as an admin. So I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I do. There is no admin override, so this should. So we, if you go to the incident table or have another tab for the incident table. Chuck's team planned this way better than we did because they had like <laughs> impersonators all over the place. And, I know. I was just thinking about like, man, how am I going to do the impersonation piece? Maybe we skip they, that. But they even <laughs> mentioned that you shouldn't impersonate because the, the content. Oh, that's right. Because it 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 doesn't it causes problems and it doesn't it doesn't uh yeah you can't it it it, it will follow the security based on the originating person. So yeah, you can't impersonate. You actually have to log in. Yeah. And I think it's actually quirky. I think sometimes it does that. So we can we can show that. So if you did you show incidents or yeah. Well, I, yeah, well, there we go. Okay. So you see no security constraint, there's 73. Great. Let's change, let's go back to that tab, activate this. You don't have survey reader role, assuming. And refresh. If I still see 73, we can go check the user and see what yeah. uh, <laughs> see what I have. Uh, still... So maybe this won't work for for admin because they kind of contain everything. Oh well, you know I'm I'm also elevated too. I wonder if that causes a problem. Mm, well, we don't want to add ele de elevate. So let's let's just impersonate somebody, Abel or your classic Abel. He won't have survey reader, and we'll see if if, if that experience is there. All right. You, you could do it on this one unless you wanted to do it on. Are you in like another view? Well, I was just trying to think if there'd be an easy way to handle that, but I don't think there will be. Yeah, it's fine. I could go create accounts and behind the scenes and and uh, do it if we need. So let's go to our famous incident table. Ooh. No records. But uh, it's not because of that rule though. <clears throat> Well, we, we should we should see a message if it was correct yeah so let me let me see if i can help in the behind the scenes and give people roles for us <laughs> i think i have access to your instance somewhere but i also have like a million instances up so oh i know yeah so maybe go give give somebody a role and i'll also try to do it uh for you as well Who are you going after? I don't want to hit the same person. I won't. I won't go after Abel. You're not going to hit him. I'll, I'll go after Troy McCoy. Ooh, I like that name. Sounds fun. That is a fun name. Troy. It's almost like Troy McClure. <laughs> you may remember me from such films. <laughs> no, but make sure you remember that password in case we don't want to impersonate them. So. Oh, I didn't. I don't. Okay, I'll have to set one in just a second. Am I setting this guy to survey? Reader? Yeah, give him give him survey, and I'll just set the password for uh, Abel. Uh, actually, let me make uh, sure. Abel so the password it. on I, you know, I do not. I mean, this password thing. <laughs> look at this. I yeah. mean, look how big that is. Yeah, yeah. What? I, who? I'm currently not looking at you, but I know exactly what you're referring to. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, you, you message an, uh, an architect, and you're like, hey, I need access to this instance. And they send you your username, and then this, like, four million long character, and you're like, holy cow. I actually just don't like this experience. You click the generate, and it's a green message, but the green message didn't do anything for you yet. It just said that you generated this crazy long password, and then you still have to click save. Yeah, seriously. And, and if you forget Let's to copy see. before you click save, you got to redo the whole thing. Right. So there's definitely some paste that experience. password somewhere. Save it. Okay. So I gave Abel. Abel didn't have the ITIL role, so I'm giving Abel the ITIL role. So now uh, I will go impersonate Abel while we while you're doing that, and see. So now Abel should have 
see incidents because he has ITIL. And but he should get the security constraints. Nope. Oh. Uh, yes, cool. So Abel has security constraints now. So if you want to show that or I can I could do a screen share of that. Yeah, maybe you should do it real quick just so it'll be Yeah. Let's um, do I have there we go. Share screen. I just gotta make sure it's the right one. Uh, it's in this video. There we go. Yeah, so all right, so we're able, go. we have ITIL, and he's starting to get some security constraints. Right. <clears throat> uh, and so that's the message no one likes. Yeah, and if I click on these, these are probably, or if I show on the columns, by the way, just shout out SN Tools. This is like my favorite button I click all the time to like show all of those extra columns. Like you do that all for me, like awesome. Like love that feature. Yeah, I have come across some client instances where their column choices are odd, to say the least. You get in there, and you're like, what are all these? Like, why do you have all these weird columns listed? Yeah. And you see here that these active is false, right? So that, that means that our, our thing that we were, were we were doing before is working. Perfect. Right, because all the, he needs, essentially, you need to have survey reader role to see active is true. So. And you you gave survey reader role to someone else, Troy McCloy. Oh, Troy McCloy, like, yeah. There we go. So let's try Troy. And he also has ITIL at least, right? Uh, no, he. Well, you know what did he get? Uh, no, <clears throat> he does not have ITIL. Yeah, so he's not going to be able to see anything. Here, let, let me uh, give him real. Let me give him my tell real quick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh man. All right, now he's got eye tail. Right. Troy McCoy, not Troy McCoy. This one, right? Troy McCoy. Yeah, Troy McCoy. Um, now let's go into incidents. Get rid of all this stuff because yeah oh there so, we go so yeah he gets to so he sees them all yeah. yep so cool so so now let's see let's try to tackle since we've just showed what creator toolbox has done in a longer way <laughs> let's uh let's see if we can uh try to convert let's create a business uh before business query rule for this the thing that we just did yes so, and then we'll talk about automating it. Um, so it, you want me to share, or you want to share? It's up to you, doesn't matter. We, I... Yeah, how about, how about you share? Okay. No, walk, us, <clears throat> walk us through it. All right. All right, cool. So now let's go into uh, your business rules. So all business rules. And system definition one, yeah. So for those who have never created a, a before query, you're gonna click new and you're gonna click advanced checkbox when that loads. <laughs> When and if it loads, then you feel like, did I actually click it? What happened? There we go. There we go. <sighs> Running. <laughs> yeah, that is so slow. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like you today. I thought it was. No, good. it does not. Probably doesn't right. like you being logged into it from somewhere else. Mm. So let's All right, so advanced. advanced. Now let's name it up top. Name this uh, hide uh, active incidents from survey reader. From from hide active incidents from non survey reader. Oof, I'm already like, <laughs> yeah, cool. Table is incident. Show in your naming convention. 
yeah, don't, like I told you, if I, if, if I don't, uh, if I don't come up with the name quick, I'll spend way too long trying to come up with the name. Okay, so then we want to check the query. And now we want to say, so when does this run? Um, what did we, what did we do on our? It's, it's like active, active is true. Yes. And so, then, then we look at this and say, if your role, right? <clears throat> yeah, but I don't think you have access to do that there. So we're gonna uh, have to script this. So pretty much all um, uh, all of these are all business before business mm -hmm. query rules have to be scripted, which is why data filtration is gonna get popular. <laughs> yes. Um, so if we go into advanced, so this is where it's kind of like, so remember we want to hide active incidents from people that don't have the role, right? That don't have the survey role. So the first thing we do is an if statement to check if they have the role. So maybe like the GS that has role, yeah. Oh, that F is in my way. Did they uh, deprecate has role exact? Did they get rid of that? Uh, I think that's only used on the front end. Really? But I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, if so, anybody so. out there knows off the top of their head, please let us know. I don't remember because I, I haven't seen it, but I know that has role, unless they've changed it, you can't. Maybe they added a, is there another parameter to deal with admin? That's a that's a deep dive for something else. All right, so we, 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 let's do an <laughs> if statement there. So if the survey reader, so if they don't have this role, I think we have to do the negative of this, right? So if they don't have this role, then, and the way uh, query rules are is you have current and you want to essentially append the query that you care about to it, right? So, It'll essentially be like current dot add encoded query. And then, and then this is what you're um, preventing. So can we cheat here and, and look at it? Oh, I don't uh, know if you're gonna see this, but- it'll, uh, be a, it'll be a little different there, right? Cause it'll be subject role, but under the data filter. And this is where it's gonna get complicated because the data filter is gonna say active is true. But what we care it, it does about, say active is true, but what I was looking at, the reverse. yeah, and I was looking at the, uh, so that comes off the, so that's our, that's actually this piece here, huh? Uh-huh. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so current dot add encoded query. So we want to do active equals false. And so, and I'll walk, we'll, we'll talk about it. Or sorry, let's do active is not equal to true because that's going to be easier to manage oh my gosh what is that one the, is the, that the uh, exclamation point exclamation okay. point yeah true because that's what the query filter says right first the query filter says active is true and we care uh, about it, the reverse of that it says yeah the uh well the data can condition or no mm -hmm. i'm sorry the, well it's filter. it's part of data condition it comes out looking like, um, oh my gosh, where am I here? This is what the data condition looks like in perfect um, the XML. And this is kind of the cheat. I was going to bring this up earlier, but you can go look at those. Um, you know, the, any condition builder translates to an encoded query stream. It's it's a great little hack to know that if you're dealing with um, condition strings, a lot of times all it does is just and them along and you just like if you have to go because I, I remember one time i had to i had to build user criteria uh, outside of user criteria <laughs> and so i i figured out that all these condition builders for user criteria were just strings and so i just i just did that grabbed them and combined them to create a query basically a before query rule to say you could only see all these things because of all these conditions 
so it's it's a neat little hack just fyi pro tip and we're doing something similar here right we're essentially yeah. taking what's current and then we're just appending to it right right okay so let's let's talk through this right so our 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 data filtration said if you if you have the survey reader role, you mm -hmm. can see active records, right? That's active is true if you have that role. What we're saying here is the re like the reverse of it, right? If you do not have survey reader, you you cannot see uh, active ones. <laughs> and active does not equal true so you're only going to get fault you're going to get inactive ones false active equals false correct now i'm going to ask this because i'm sure someone will want to know why aren't we doing active equals false so if we wanted to <laughs> automate this right the reason why we don't is if we wanted to automate this we get back active is equal to true so if we think of every use case that exists, like it could be, you know, um, category is equal to, you know, foo. I don't know what the other categories are, but I do know the not of what we have. <laughs> and Perfect. so we're, we're going to use our famous like ES20, uh, ES12, you know, replace all functionality. And Ooh. we just have to replace equal signs with not equal signs. I like that. So, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. So, so let's let's test this. <laughs> Do we still um, need this here though? So that is what that is doing is is kind of making it more performant. We don't really need that, but I want to make sure when does this run? When we do a a filter that I don't let's take it away for now. Let's let's remove it. Because you know, that's my brain is already you know, struggling <laughs> to keep up with how many knots we're doing. <laughs> okay, and so I think I was the one impersonating. So let me get my. Let me quit sharing. Uh, I, I think I don't need you to quit sharing. Um. Because I think I can uh, take it over. So who was it that, uh, I guess I'll just show both people again. Nice. Oh, hey, look at that. Nice. Yeah. All right. So let's impersonate Abel. And our expectation of Abel, who had ITIL, is... He should not see records correct and because he's, he doesn't he's the one that will reader. lose right but he did see the security constraint so now we're going to see if he doesn't see the security constraint right so yeah oh. see no security constraint so you only, only see sees, false yep and he only sees that which is good and now let's check our other person to make sure that That they should still see all the records, right? I really should have created a better menu for that. And look at that. So our before business query worked. Crazy. <laughs> now, how do we automate it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the first thing I want us to test is I'm gonna uh, stop sharing. Uh, if you want to share your, I'll show through yours. The first thing we want to test is you remember how you saw that subject um, condition? uh yes Remember, here yeah so take that xml what we should check if if has role you pass in that sys id does uh does that still work all right so has role the sys id that comes from that should be should be the sys id of the role correct that's what you're thinking correct so now, so that is that or right. actually, I guess that goes up ahead, right? That looks different, didn't? Can you copy the whole the subject role just to yep. make sure? I'm not doubting that you, you, you. I was just like I thought it had different 
society. But I'm new to this whole copy paste thing. <laughs> no, it's probably right. You're probably right. I, I just there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, it's good. it's the same one. Perfect. So now, so you're replace, thinking, yeah, line seven. You're thinking if, you if can, we can do that, and if you can't, I mean, if it doesn't work that way, um, we could still we just have to query for it, right? So yeah, exactly. You just run a query on it. Okay, but, so that's that. And then I'll try right. impersonating again. Give it a second. Let it. <laughs> yeah. Do it yet? <laughs> well, I still need to get back to the. To the to the thing, so just wait for you. There we go. And and so that didn't work because this guy got you just Is that Troy. Yeah, yeah, that broke. That broke yeah. big time. Okay, so no problem. So we just need to then do a little a little query for it. So um, cool. So we know what the end result is. And again, like we're, we're even cheating a little bit here, right? Like we're only supporting roles, like groups would be a different thing. So you probably would write a script include that is doing a lot of this logic. Um, but what we'll say is for now, let's just try to see if we can automate just getting the role, assuming role is the, is the, is the solution. So, so the first thing we wanna do is try to, to query that record that, that that data filtration that we just did. So the table of that data filtration, I need to go find it as well. Oh, you know what I should be doing? I should be using something much easier. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Right? And I think Thank that, you, Arnoud on yeah, SN Tools. Thank you. And that, And this gives you access to actually finding tables, right? Oh, no. Maybe not. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that. So the data filtration records live on the sys underscore df underscore data underscore filtration. You know what's going to be interesting here is. Like Whoa, how, how how do you get that record? <laughs> and I think um, this is where we would actually use Flow Designer, right? So we can even get, oh to build the automated piece. Yeah. Um, so for now, we're gonna just hard, I would just Cheap. hard code it to the yeah. that sys ID uh, of this one. Yeah. But I think we if we have time, we'll we'll convert this to a, a Flow Designer. I guess we could do Git, huh? Yep. You can just do Git for this one. Oops. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, well, that's not going to work yet. We still got to. So now you can go pull the, the those those values, right? So the df dot um, get get value, right? Value and those are so the data condition is data underscore condition, and the subject condition is subject underscore condition. Yes, data condition and subject condition, okay. Yep. Let's see. I'm so excited on, on here that we're writing code. Oh, it's you know <laughs> it's it is so true this i love writing code um and you know with a, a change in uh my roles i don't get to write as much code as i used to and so i do miss it it's nice to get back in keep you from getting rusty yeah so so this gets a little tricky by the way if uh they didn't put anything in data condition. So we're gonna write a check to make sure that they put something in the data condition. So I have another, I'm concerned about something. Well, maybe not, maybe there's, okay, so table is there. Cause in the XML, and I know it doesn't show, but data condition, the XML element has a table in it. 
Um, but table does exist as its own thing. I was concerned there for a second that I was going to be some weird. No, you'll, um, you'll, you'll get it exactly. So as long as if DC exists and, and. It's oh, you want to do and? String, just that and, okay. and it's not an empty string. I know. Like if yes, 12 was here, it would be easier, but. Um, <laughs> okay. So if it's not, so then. Now we have access to the data condition, which is going to be our adding. So then I would do like query equals. Well, do we also need to uh, do this do real of quick? Two of our query. Well, I just meant. Um, we, we don't need to. You do don't the think table so? One. No, okay. because like our business rule is running on the table. That's if like, well, we will need to do the table one, but we'll do that in Flow Designer because we'll have access to that uh, there. Okay. So let's just create a query variable. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We could do it here. Um, and this is going to equal DC. But now we're going to replace all. No, oh, you want to? Wanna... Yeah, replace all. And it's going to replace all the equal signs with the not equal signs. Cool. So then, so now we've satisfied that what we're going to do on line 20, right? Um, so that part's good. So now we need to solve the line 17 one, right? So for line 17, so, so pretty much after line 14, we're going to have to um uh do do a query right do another query oh what is that table sys user role table? isn't it sys i thought oh no that's it's group sys member underscore I'm thinking, user. yeah role are you sure that that's that sys <laughs> underscore user underscore role Sys underscore user underscore role, right? Yeah, 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 you got it. Okay. So then hr.get. Oh, wait. First, we need to extract it from our our SC variable. So ooh, we need to do some like, like splicing, right? Because it says subject role equals, and we need everything after the equal sign. <laughs> uh. Oh well, okay. So we'll just do it quick, so I don't have to look up a. Yeah. I always do a temp equals what is it? Um, subject condition, right? Yeah, and we're making an assumption here. Only one subject condition right now, but again, like <laughs> we, like you would write a whole like script to, include to handle all the edge cases here. So. Um, yeah, you totally would. You, you'd really want to go through this and make sure you're not uh, um, I think oops. and I think I, this is why they didn't do it in, in the first one, right like like there's so much that they'd have to consider in order to yeah to so. yeah for sure okay so sys ID beautiful so now we Boy, what, ha what happened there? Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> um, all right, so line 19. So we're on. Yes. Um, if that does exist, then what we want to do is set has role to equal gs dot. Oh, no. gs dot has role. And the role is, oh, we actually need to do oh, HR. Oh, I got you. Get value. Yes. Get value. What is that uh, I think field? It's, I think it's name, but I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, it's name. Nice. Okay, so we. Oh, I guess I don't have to. It's already false to begin with. Yeah. So now. 
I guess inside 19, if has role, and then you just, I guess if not has role, right? Then do the current add encoded query of the query above. Ooh. Current. Dot Wait, oh, so. Current dot add encoded query, and then just pass it query. And so in theory, we just replaced what we did. <laughs> yes. In uh, how many lines of code? Just that many? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But this is, again, in ed, it'll actually be less in Flow Designer, right? Because we can do lookup records and, and get data pills and things like that. Um, so let's comment out line 26. You want me to take out that whole block? Yeah, that whole block. and. Let's just add a little uh, gs.info or or something. Or I guess I guess if we run oh we'll run script tracer. We'll run script tracer. I think it'll be okay. So let's uh, actually no like add a gs info in there. <laughs> but at, like let's just gs info. Okay. Here, uh, here's another pro tip. Always start your stuff with something you can find. I like Richie Rich so. Nice. What do you want me to spit out here? Uh, query and has role and I mean a kind of a bunch of variables here just to So you want has role. I also like to pipe separate my stuff just so I can keep an, an idea of what I'm throwing out there. And if we were in a scoped app for this one. Like we could do the ES12 stuff where it's template literals. Oh, I remember that. That was so nice. Yeah, and someone told what me else? actually off off screen that replace all is still there. So I think ServiceNow wrote their own replace all um, before oh, ES12. Oh, really? So. Interesting. Uh, I think that's that's pretty good. We could probably do this guy here. Oh, that's going to be massive. I think oh. so. I think it'll be huge. No, I think that's good. I think that's good. Okay. All right. Do you, so, you want to run it? I'll bring up. Um, yeah. Just, you can go in the background. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab logs real quick as soon as you so run we're gonna, that. We're going to see if Troy sees his records again. Or did we break everything? <laughs> yeah. Also possible. <laughs> And put a hole in the universe. Nope. So Troy sees his records again. Just Sweet. saying. Nice. And and then now we'll see if Abel I really should just go to this guy. And he doesn't. So look at that. So now we have the automation pieces. Woo! Now let's let's see if we can in seven minutes build a flow. Let's do it. All right. Do you want to build the flow or do you want me to build it? Yeah, I'll try building it. Let's see yeah. Uh, okay. We could do this. Oh, I hate when you're on like a a small like screen. There's like a little bug with that like uh, UI. Um, oh. Your first snake goes to the left. It's so weird. All right. So so now that. Uh, John has all the pieces on his. I'm going to try to remember it. <laughs> we're we're going to see how this goes. So pretty much on this flow, we want it to trigger anytime someone updates. Well, let's assume create because we can make it support update, but then you have to, you have to do a little bit more as well. Um, create uh, before uh, query rule. So while, while you're doing that real quick, let me, I'm going to share the log statement so people can see how that yeah, came yeah. through. Um, so you can see here, uh, it's easy to find. And then we can look and see what those queries come out to look like. Um, and it's, I mean, you should, we knew it was already going to be um, that for the subject criteria. And then I believe 
when I was DC, I don't remember which order it was in, but you can see that it gives you um, both pieces of what we were querying for, right? So that's kind of neat that the logs, um, they show out what I expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And you can see applying uh, because incident has, oh, that's the other thing. Uh, they were talking about how this, if you, if you, I think it's checkmarked, isn't it? Um, cascading. So any of the tables cascaded off of or extended off of incident, they're also going to apply. And I think that's where these extra log statements come from because you can see universal caller or caller ID, uh, universal request and so forth because those are cas or, uh, extended off. I think that was because I originally went to that table and it had that predefined filter and then I refreshed it. So I think that's why I ran a few times. Oh, but, oh okay. But the cascading is- But anyways, good. yeah, the cascading still does the thing. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> uh, if you show them back to my screen, what I've done yep. is data filtration is on create. We're just gonna assume every time it creates for now, we're gonna, do a uh, lookup record. Um, let's not do a lookup record. We're just going to create a new record. Create a record. It's been a while since I've been in here. Oh my gosh. Uh, create record. All right. Let's... What happens when you get out of the Oof. game for a minute? Oof. All right. So the table. Uh, needs to be the from the data filtration record. Oh, your instance is slow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I and said, yeah. We have table name, so we should drag that there. So now we got the table. Um, oh, actually, oops, I meant the table here is business rule. <laughs> business rule, because we're creating a business rule. Oof going going crazy here so we want the uh, query to be checked we want the name to be the description of this um, you know what maybe we'll even mm, well if you make a, yeah the description have to do we'll put it like, we'll put the sys ID of this, right? Something like that. We'll, we'll just put some relevant information in here. Yeah, but so I think yeah. if you wanted to add text to it though, you'd end up having to, to do like a, a script on that. Yeah, data filtration. Oh, can you just do that? Oh, that's yeah. nice. Uh, sys ID, and then we're gonna do subject name or subject condition, just so we have this kind of stuff to compare and then we want the data condition yeah cool okay so what else was your business rule i think that was the only thing checked it's by default it's gonna do a before um and then we just went to advanced yeah cool so script so here is where we would you know write write a little bit of that script. So essentially we just need it to return that code that you just did. Uh, Do you wanna slack see. it to me? So I yes, can... I will. Yeah, because I think I'm gonna need to do, I'm gonna click done for a second. So before we do that, I need to go and, and look up some records, right? So we're gonna look up some records. The table is, um, going to be on incident because or actually the table is going to be sys user role do you remember we had to look up the user role right and yes. that's going to be where mm -hmm. sys id is equal to oh and then we have to do the split <laughs> okay. yes so let's Pull some of your code. Okay, so something like, so the split is FD data dot trigger dot current subject condition. 
So we take that subject condition, we split it, we have this, and now we're going to return. That's a U, not an I. <laughs> I just going to return sysid. No, oh, no I. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's all we needed, right? So. Oh no, I need to do sys id equals. Plus. Okay. So I think that we're good. Okay. So we got the user role. What else did we need to get? Um, And then we needed to do a replace all on the data condition. So this is where I think we could create like a flow variable for that. Um, hold on, let's save this for a second before I break stuff. Okay. Um, so in this script, we now have access to the role. So that could be something like Or actually, I'm trying to to think what how best to do this. Ah, oh, it's getting complex. Um, <laughs> so we need to return like a string of this. All right. So maybe we'll we'll, we'll stop it. We're, we're getting close to like. Um, so essentially, what we need to do is probably a. Uh, a GR record here again, but now that we we because <laughs> essentially what we're trying to build is on the business rule we're we're We're, we're trying to build this as a string, right? So it'll be some sort of, and this is where that like ES12 literals would come in because that would be nice. But like, we're trying to build, you know, some sort of, you know, string that we could. Oh, the do. query? Well, we need to return like, like it needs to look, you know, pretty much like this, right? Um, because the business, like, cause we're creating this entire record, right? So this entire record needs to 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 kind of like return at least this part, right? So the so the record so in the in the flow designer we need to say we need to set uh, has role right equals to gs dot has role of the the role name that we just did, and then we also need to just do this this part of it as well. So maybe that is, maybe I'm thinking this is too, too much. Um, so um, for our equals has role <laughs> equals. So is this going to run a uh, eval on it? No, no, it's not. And we don't want it to. Oh, we just want to put this. Oh, because we're just right? we're just setting a value to the, yeah, the yeah, field. Yeah. I got you. I see what you're saying. FD data dot tree. Oh, uh, dot lookup record dot record dot uh, name. So that returns the name. And now we're closing those friends. So yeah, so that's has role. Um, so then the next one was bar. Uh, if you love my naming conventions, if has role. And oh, if not has role. If not has role, then. I can actually just do it this way. Wow, it's gonna be nice. Current dot add encoded query, and then 
then this is going to be the data condition. Oh, not that one. It's on the trigger. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, like, it's, I don't know if it's slow or because, you know, sometimes it's edited, it doesn't work as, as well. So current dot data condition plus this, that. So yeah, I think that's, and then I just need to return Wait, I think the only, yeah, so I think that's, I think we're good. So return FF plus FFF. <laughs> All right. Do you need, I guess. Hmm. The semicolons are fine. They're, they'll prevent it. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I was just thinking about new lines or something like that, because it will process yeah. it as a straight single, single string. It, it won't, the, this, the semicolons will prevent that. Okay. But normally, yeah, I could put like a new line there or something, but. Um, all right. So I think that was it. <laughs> like, so it's crazy you, if you're going to test you... it, yeah. If you want to test it, though, turn off the, the other business rule, right? Or, or I guess it'll create a new one, won't, won't it? Yes, it will. So, um, well, though, I think your trigger, though, is going to be a problem. You'd have to create a whole new. No, I think we're good. So, I'm well, gonna... it's trigger on creation, though, of the. Yeah, that's okay. It's data the, filtration it'll, rule it'll just pretend you did it as a creator. oh right 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 yeah the testing i, I always forget about yeah. that part so wow your instance is super slow all right so we'll see if all that code you wrote we simplified <laughs> to do this let's see okay so we looked up the record um survey reader right we got it so that looks that looks right so far um, we created a business rule and we this is the record so and look has role survey reader if not has role current ad encoded active equals oh I forgot to do the replace all oh, but that's that's pretty good though that I mean that was pretty good <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Wow. Uh, let's see if that, I just want to delete it. So, cause it's going to create a name with the same one. Okay. Right so now. Right. And thank you logs for uh, this. So I think all I need to do is bar, let's take this guy. F -E, just to, to be good about it, bar fe string or replace equals fe dot replace all. Or actually, yeah, I mean, we'll try that and see if that works. Not equals and then fe. And I, I can do like a two string or something like that if, if we need. Um, sure. But all right, so let's save that since our test went so fast. Ooh, instances liking me today. All right, we go into here. We look at this. Not nice. All right, so now the question is, so note this one's inactive. If I refresh this, we have our, our business rule. Ooh. Oh, I forgot to set the table. <laughs> that's that's running on everything. global. Oh no, it's running on everything. All right, let's while that's loading because that's gonna take a while. Um, did I not? Wow, come on, John. Could have seen that I missed the table here. Yeah, probably. That's okay. So now we're running it on incident, save that, cool. Let's delete this. Ooh, I also saw that I needed to, to put this in a string.
Mm. Good catch. <laughs> yep. Okay. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Nice. <clears throat> All right, and then that's going to run, and we're just going to see if that actually worked. And if that did, this oh, is an, a, an example of like now you have the framework to you know build as many of these as you wanted, right? So, oh, this is missing that one. Oops, just gotta do that one more time. Sorry, sorry. Doing things in scripts, you gotta like remember to, to to keep your parens correct. So I'm just going to save that. I'm just going to change this manually because that'll work because the other one worked. OK. And now we're going to impersonate somebody and if, see nice. if that worked. Nice. After this record saves because your instance is so slow. <laughs> I think the only downside of that, or actually, no, I think it's good because it'll capture it in your update set because you're creating it, flow is going to run. So like like that, that would be workable. And you can add more checks, right, to make sure that, it, you know, a certain criteria is only certain things. Um, so, so all incidents. So this person only sees 28, no, no security issue. And... No whammies. Big money. Bam. Woo! Yeah. And I, was, I, I like was, it. I was trying. I was. We were running out of time, and I'm like, ah, 15 <laughs> minutes over, but it's okay. Nice. We did it. We did it. And I feel good. Like I think. Yeah. I think we we came out. We. I mean, we talked a lot in the beginning, but like. I think we, we talked over data filtration. We even did like, you know, the exploration of how we would build the automation because we did it manually. Right. Yep. And then and then we, we even showed flow designer where how like simple it is to do in flow designer if you kind of know the logic you're you're looking for. Yeah. No, I and, and, and I guess if flow designer is out of your wheelhouse, you can just, you know, run a a, a business rule on the table. So as they get created, it would create the before business query. Um to solve that issue. But again, this may all be for not if they release it and allow you to set it as a before anyways, then you won't have that problem. But it is neat to, to see that there are solutions available until that happens, right? Yeah, I could totally see like someone coming out with a package for this or an update set where, you know, it's just a, a bunch of flows that handle all the use cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we only handled a very small sliver, but I think like, right. You know, there's definitely lots of uh, possibilities here. So yeah, no, I agree. Well, this has been a fun one, getting into some code, into some admin stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it worked, and it totally worked. <laughs> Wait, are you? What are you trying to say? I, I just said like <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if that was gonna work. So yeah. No, that's cool. good though. Yeah, this has been a good one. All right, well, All right. we're at our out. Well, we're over our hour, but uh, yeah, we'll see you next time, people. Have a good one.